Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue from Middle Tennessee State University. We continue our partnership with Middle Tennessee News by showcasing its report on the growing eSports program on our campus. We update you on the Tennessee Teach Back Initiative, which provides full scholarships to students willing to work after graduation in rural school districts. And we touch base with communication studies in our College of Liberal Arts and explore how it serves our students through an array of career-oriented concentrations. I'm Andrew Oppmann, and this is Out of the Blue. Welcome to Out of the Blue, I'm Andrew Oppmann. We continue our partnership with Middle Tennessee News, showcasing its story on the growing eSports program on our campus. Here to tell us all about it is MTM reporter Jace Stanridge, a senior in our School of Journalism and Strategic Media. Jace, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, I'm glad to be here. Now, we're really glad to have you. Well, we wanna talk about eSports and we're really happy to continue our content partnership with Middle Tennessee News. So we're gonna be showing us a great segment that you've did on eSports. Let's talk about what was your um, goal in, in reporting this. It's obviously, we've got an established location on campus, we have teams. Talk about how this is gaining in popularity. Sure, so the eSports team and the eSports club are very, very under-recognized. I've, I knew somebody in the, on the Valorant team and I never really knew much about it as a student. Um, so I did a little digging um, and found out that there was actually a really good, uh, really good club that's brand new, uh, the Splatoon club, um, the Splatoon team. And I kind of just dug into the esports a little bit and then realized that there were, um, the CUSA was actually establishing a, um, a program. That's our um, conference USA, absolutely. our athletics absolutely. conference. Absolutely. So they're uh, talking about making that a major thing um, and that's pretty exciting. And so I just kept digging, digging and found that information out and it's pretty exciting pretty exciting for the club and you've got some background on this too you were telling me before the program started you placed third in the nation third. playing madden <laughs> yes sir so so during covid uh there was nothing really much to do so <laughs> i uh, so i uh, i hopped on the madden i started really really practicing and getting good and uh yeah, during COVID, I just kind of, it's kind of exploded watching uh, watching all the YouTube videos, trying to figure out what the best plays were, defenses and mm -hmm. all that. And uh, I went to the playoffs um, as a sixth seed, sixth seed uh, going in undefeated and then came out third place. That's um, amazing. So it was, it was pretty cool. It was a pretty uh, unreal experience. That's amazing. So obviously eSports, very competitive, sure. um, very intense, right? I very. mean, you know this as a player and as a reporter, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's very... Uh, it's very emotional, I'll mm -hmm. say that, because you get so invested into the game, and I'm a very competitive person myself, so every time something doesn't go my way, or I could have done something better, I, I get a little mad. But it's just all how you can calm down and how you can bounce back from it. But it's a very emotional um, aspect of a, of a sport. Well, let's go ahead and roll that clip from Middle Tennessee News. Middle Tennessee State University is known for their Division I sports teams. But inside of room 137 of the Business and Aerospace Building sits a different type of school sports team. Monday we have Valorant, Tuesday we have Splatoon, uh, Thursday we have Overwatch, Friday we have Rocket League. So all of these games are competing at different times and most of them compete in the lab or from home. MTSU Esports is a school recognized club that competes in the National Esports Collegiate Conference or the NECC. So I think a large part of MTSU Esports' growth in the last year or so would be the new addition of this lab right here. In the past, we've never really had a space for all of our members to congregate. The NECC boasts over 400 schools and universities, and each compete against each other for a shot at a national championship. And in addition to all the growth that we have experienced recently, Conference USA, the D1 conference that MTSU competes in for games such as football, nice. basketball, everything else, they're actually expanding into esports in the coming years. They made that announcement, and we're just waiting to see what that entails because they haven't released too much information, but it's very exciting. Around, After around, speaking around. with staff advisor Richard Lewis, he says as of now, the club runs through the recreational center on campus and is treated as such. I think, you know, scholarships and recruiting and, and having sort of, you know, uh, full-time coaching and things like that, just like any of the other sports would be needed. 
If all goes well for the CUSA, this program could join the ranks of the most prominent sports on campus. Jay Standridge, Middle Tennessee News. Well, Jay, so that's fascinating stuff. Thanks for that report. Absolutely. Let's dig a little bit deeper in this. Talk about where they were located. They're in the Business and Aerospace Building, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a there's a big computer lab that I had no idea of. Um, it's actually open to every student that wants to just go in there and play games. And I never knew about that. So mm -hmm. I figured, why not get it some more publicity and try and uh, get some more students to go in there during a break from classes, go on there and play some Valorant, go play some Rainbow Six Siege. Like, why not? It's there for students, so might as well go and go and use it. It's a very, very good building and very, very good um, utilities there. You said it in the report, it's organized like a club sport. Describe what that means. So a club sport is different than what the baseball team or football team would be. Uh, the club sport doesn't get as much funding, um, so they're not allowed to give out scholarships or really any kind of um, anything like that, but they still practice as a team would. They traveled this semester, uh, they went to Purdue. Um, they do, they compete in all these tournaments. They do these same exact things, they just don't get the funding. And they compete in uh, anywhere from division one to division six. And they actually, and the Splatoon team got to division one this year. That's fantastic. So. You're a journalism major in the College of Media and Entertainment. I know Dean Beverly Keel is a big supporter of eSports. Yes. One of the things, I bet you've heard this in your reporting and your experience, that's because becoming a, a prime recruiting feature for some students. They want to be able to play competitively and they may seek out a university that has and maybe avoid someone that does not have these kind of opportunities, right? right? Yeah, so it's so we're definitely growing. There's been a lot of interest and in the Splatoon team, like I mentioned, is brand new. So they just keep adding teams and when there's more interest, they just keep adding more teams and uh, more players are definitely getting into it. And uh, it's a pretty exciting. The ceiling's extremely high That's for, neat. for the eSports club. There's no telling where eSports could go in the future. Well, speaking about going in the future, let's talk about you, journalism major graduating pretty doggone soon, right? Graduating this December. Yeah, this this is months. August, so tick tock. This yeah. is the start of your, your last semester. I'm, I'm taking some 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 heavy hitter classes too, so I'm really trying to really dig it into this last semester. Now, when you told me that, my first question was, why in the world would you want to graduate early? But it sounds like you've got some opportunities. Yeah, so I've, I've uh, been working for MTSU Athletics um, for the baseball team for the past few years, and there's a lot of opportunities here, and there's also a lot of opportunities at other schools for um, the sports information director directors or uh, for media of all that and uh, angle. And that's that's where you see yourself going. Absolutely. So coming into college, I wanted to go to broadcast news or uh, sports mm -hmm. uh, play by play. But coming into college, I really re realized that I like working for a team and doing statistics and doing the social media, creating graphic design, mm -hmm. taking photos, videos, video. Like, I really find a liking to that. Um, and I think I found it. I so, think you certainly like, have. How did you find us from Cleveland, Tennessee? Your so actually, um, our girls basketball team um, is phenomenal. So we came here as a student section. Um, we came to MTSU to come watch our girls play. And as soon as I stepped on campus, I was like, wow, this nice. is incredible. And it's two hours away from where I live, which is far, but not too far. And I realized they had a sports media program and I'm like, I love sports. I love media. Let's, let's make it happen. And so, you've, you've and, done that. And I love it. And I, and I love every single aspect of MTSU. Sweet. Well, Jace, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, thank you for your report and best of luck to you in your final semester here at MTSU. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back. We do it. The stars come to Middle Tennessee State University. And students come here to become stars, no matter what they pursue. We do it. We're the only college of media and entertainment in the world, just outside the heart of Nashville. Look, uh, the mic check, one, two, everybody listen When you do it like this, ain't no competition I'm talking B.I.G., V.I.P., treat them like a front row seat And make them pay attention If I shoot for the three, then I ain't never missing Cranking up the degrees like I was in the kitchen Can't lose, got too much to prove And when you do it all, it gets too hard to do it Our curriculum and facilities are cutting edge And our relationships with industry leaders Give students an edge over the competition Check it out you can get real-world experience with degrees in recording industry, media arts, journalism and strategic media, and more. Media and entertainment at Middle Tennessee State University. Learn to shine. The Jennings A. Jones College of Business at Middle Tennessee State University is the number one producer of business talent in the greater Nashville area. Our nationally ranked programs and state-of-the-art facilities offer a world-class education at an affordable price. 
The exclusive partnership of Jones College with Dale Carnegie Training Worldwide equips our graduates with the soft skills they need to succeed. Jones College of Business, it delivers an education for the real world. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Oppmann. The Tennessee Teach Back Initiative is a teacher preparation program developed by our College of Education. It recruits high school students to earn an initial teaching degree at MTSU and then teach in the high need areas of our state. Here to update us is Michelle Stevens, professor and director of the Center for Fairness, Justice and Equity in the College of Education. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I, I think this is your first time on Out of the Blue, right? It is. But you're no stranger to talking in, in front of the cameras about this great initiative. So tell our viewers and listeners what TTBI is and what you're trying to accomplish through this. So the Tennessee Teach Back Initiative is a recruitment uh, program that was um, launched by the College of Education here at MTSU. And what we're trying to do is to partner with districts across the state where we are recruiting high school students and community college students to come and learn with us to become teachers. Um, and those partner districts that we're working with, they are going to be sponsoring those students uh, through last dollar funding. Um, once the students graduate, they go back to that uh, sponsoring district um, and they work for as long as they have been supported. We are really trying to eliminate the obstacles and the barriers um, from that keep people from going into the teaching career mm -hmm. um, to the field of education and really promoting uh, education as a viable option. Um, but it really is about knocking those barriers out of the way to make sure that everyone has an opportunity uh, to become a teacher. This is a fantastic program. I remember well the rollout ceremony we had at campus school, mm -hmm. Dean Cohn arriving on campus and one of her first uh, opportunities to meet the campus and participate in something like this. It solves so many problems and I'd love for you to kind of expand on that. The first problem being a lot of our rural school districts having a hard time getting candidates to fill these important jobs in their school systems. This basically gives them the pathway to fill those vacancies, right? So a little bit of a pay it forward for them. Absolutely. And it really does um, have the opportunity to make sure that as the students come from those rural areas, mm -hmm. they then go back. Mm -hmm. And so it's that pipeline that's created that's really important. It's a lot about funding as well. There's a lack of funding. And it's not only like generally, but there are some areas that are high needs areas like special education and physical education mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. things like that and so what we're really trying to do is to fill those needs those specific needs that each district has especially our rural districts and our partners so I'm a superintendent in one of these districts I identify some potential candidates I think they would be great and you're really almost a broker in a lot of ways you're gonna provide this great education but you're creating this contract between the district and the student and the university that basically says, hey, we're gonna get you through, get your education, you're gonna return back to your home county and fill this specific need. Mm -hmm. And they know the job they're gonna go into, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. That's gotta be reassuring to that student as well, mm -hmm. right? It's job security, right? but also, not only are we bringing them on, they will not have to pay a dime. And that's really the point of it, right? Like we are partnering not only to receive funding, but also mentoring opportunities. We are really focusing on not only recruiting the students, but making sure that they're engaged so that we retain them. And then as they graduate and they're inducted into the field of education, they stay. Mm -hmm. And so it really is about retention throughout the whole process. I get selected for this program. I get an education and I get a job. Absolutely. And you mentioned the last dollar scholarship, and I think that's important to explain to our viewers and listeners. Last dollar meaning they, these are students that are likely to qualify for a lot of scholarships and other financial aid. The last dollar supplements that, correct? Correct, absolutely. Um, and so you're right, a lot of students are um, getting some of the institutional uh, merit scholarships mm -hmm. that we or actually- Or guaranteed academic scholarships. Abs absolutely. And so what happens is we are working with financial aid to look at each 
um, students' needs and what their financial aid needs are and what they're already getting. So that's when the district comes in and then they sponsor those students for those last dollar scholarships. And that's wonderful because that's an investment in their future. Absolutely. They're putting their money to suit and meet those needs. Absolutely. The other thing that we're doing is it's not just tuition. We're also, um, so going into the field of teaching is actually pretty expensive. There's a lot of tests that mm -hmm. teachers have to take. And so we're making sure that the test fees are covered and making sure that any opportunity that they have to prepare for those tests, that those things are covered as well. And so it really is about eliminating the obstacles and the barriers. Mm -hmm. What a great opportunity you're, you're presenting to them. This is a all expenses paid? Yes. And a job waiting for you afterwards. And mentorship, right? Right, and so it really is about developing the student from the very beginning of their program until they go into the profession. And really we want them to feel that they're a part of the community even before they get to the classroom. Uh, so it, it really is a benefit for them to be partnered with this district um, because they know that's where they're going to be. So they're, they're part of that community from the very beginning. Michelle, you've been on campus 15 years as a professor, and this is your first year as director of this initiative. I love to describe the College of Education as, a, as what you call yourself, through difference makers. How have you made a difference in this role? It feels amazing. It's great to be able to promote a field that everyone has been touched by. Um, everyone has had a teacher um, in some sense, uh, in some way, and every one of us has been impacted by a special person, at least one of the many teachers that we've had. And so I'm really happy to be able to provide opportunities and also um, to make sure that things are accessible for um, our different communities, our rural communities, also thinking about diversity. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really important and just so happy that things are really falling into place. Well, we're happy you're here. Before you go, where do I go on the web to find out more about this initiative? Uh, you can go to mtsu.edu slash ttbi. There you go, TTBI, standing for the Tennessee Teach Back Initiative. Michelle Stevens with the College of Education. Thanks for joining us and congratulations. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back. The Tennessee Teach Back Initiative, or TTBI, is a new comprehensive program at Middle Tennessee State University. The TTBI program provides excellent teacher education and training at MTSU at little to no cost to students. The program won't impact the student's ability to receive scholarships and grants. All gift aid is awarded first. The program may also provide funds to offset costs beyond tuition, such as books and living expenses like on-campus housing and meal plans. Here's how it works. Students apply to the TTBI program. When the student is accepted into the program, they are matched with a partnering school district. MTSU, the partnering school district, and the student all sign an agreement committing everyone to a true partnership through the student's journey in becoming a licensed teacher through MTSU. TTBI scholars also have a dedicated TTBI recruitment and engagement specialist helping them through admissions to MTSU as well as programs related to TTBI. What can you expect as a TTBI student at MTSU? An opportunity to live on campus in the Difference Makers Living Learning Community, mentoring support from the partnering school district, personalized planning with a designated academic advisor, fun and engaging campus-wide activities. After completing the teacher education program at MTSU, students will be prepared to fulfill their commitment to teaching in their partnering school district. Students are required to teach for an equal number of years that they were supported at MTSU by their partnering school district. If the designated time commitments are not met, the student will be required to make payments back to their school district. However, we are confident that our MTSU graduates will complete their TTBI commitments. Come join TTBI and be a difference maker at MTSU. To learn more, visit mtsu.edu slash ttbi. We do it. The stars come to Middle Tennessee State University 
and students come here to become stars, no matter what they pursue. Hey, cut. We do it all. We're the only college of media and entertainment in the world, just outside the heart of Nashville. Look, uh, mic check, one, two, everybody listen When you do it like this, ain't no competition I'm talking B.I.G., V.I.P., treat them like a front row seat And make them pay attention If I shoot for the three, then I ain't never missing Cranking up the degrees like I was in the kitchen Can't lose, got too much to prove And when you do it all, it gets too hard to do it Our curriculum and facilities are cutting edge And our relationships with industry leaders Give students an edge over the competition Check it out you can get real-world experience with degrees in recording industry, media arts, journalism and strategic media, and more. Media and entertainment at Middle Tennessee State University. Learn to shine. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Oppmann. Communication studies in our College of Liberal Arts serves students through a unique array of career-oriented concentrations. Here to tell us about the innovation and opportunities in this program is Chair and Professor Mary Beth Asbury. Mary Beth, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Your first time on Out of the Blue. It is. Yes. Well, we're going to make it a memorable one Sorry. because you're going to talk about communication studies. Tell us about the major and what makes it different and what role are you playing in the lives of your students? Well, communication essentially is the study of symbols, messages, and meanings. And what we do in our major is take that a little bit further and we teach you practical skills regarding how to act in the workplace, how to get a job, how to have meaningful relationships, what not to say in a relationship, <laughs> what to say in a relationship, friendship, family, uh, romantic relationships, etc. We also cover a lot of persuasion and social justice and debate topics. And essentially we teach people how to critically evaluate messages, whether that is coming from a one-on-one -on -one scenario, a group scenario from your boss, from an advertisement or from a documentary you're watching. I've had the opportunity to be invited to speak in some of your classes. Yes. And the, the thing that strikes me about your discipline and your majors is that you're really teaching what I consider to be the practical application of communication, yes. how I can be better at it, yes. what it could be used for, and that's not an accident, right? <laughs> no, we are very purposeful in that. Uh, we try to make all of our classes uh, experiential learning or MT Engage, mm -hmm. depending on the level. So that means you're not just learning about the concept of interviewing, for example. We actually have you go out and do an actual job interview and then you report back on that. In our training and development classes, you actually create a training and the instructor, Dr. Prittis, is really great at finding organizations that our students physically go to and conduct a training in that setting. If you take the debate class, you're gonna do a debate. If you take an uh, interpersonal class, you may do something like interview someone who's from a different culture or interview family members uh, to learn how these concepts are applied in your mm -hmm. own lives. Mm -hmm. You mentioned debate, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about your uh, world-class debate yes. team attached to your department. Yes. Brag on them for a little bit. Our debate team is awesome. I can't, <laughs> I can't say anything else. They are a, a group of students and they are from all majors. So it is not just communication majors. We have actually a lot of political science majors on the team with communication minors or a double major simply because a lot of debaters go to law school and we teach them those skills. Our debate team um, has been national champions for several years running mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we were very, very lucky that President McPhee has decided to sponsor us in perpetuity because of our success recently. And so we feel very blessed and happy about that. But it just goes to show that we put our money where our mouth is. We try to teach these skills and we're successful at doing that. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, that the department places a great emphasis on mm -hmm. internships mm -hmm. and getting that experience. Why yeah. is that important? I think I can figure out why, but I'd like <laughs> you to tell me. <laughs> um, it's important for students to have that real world um, context in terms of how they 
use the skills they've learned in the major. So actually we have more internship offers than we have students applying at the mm. moment. Since January, we have 31 active internship uh, companies seeking our students. And a lot of students don't take advantage of that, unfortunately, but the companies are there. We have the resources. We are willing to help you find it. And most students who have done an internship do not regret it. Even if they end up not liking the company or area, hey, at least now they know, right. I don't want to do what I always thought I wanted to do. And now I'm going to pivot to another direction. And it's better to find that out earlier than later. Mary Beth, I know you've got a lot of concentrations within the, the department that provide a lot of options for students. Can you talk through those? Sure. Uh, so right now we have four concentrations and each of those you can do in a BA or a BS. The only difference is the Bachelor of Arts, the BA, requires four semesters of a foreign language and the BS does not. So um, we first have our organizational communication concentration and that has been with us for a very long time um, and is very successful. In that concentration, the way I describe it is we teach people how to get a job and then how to act on the job. Mm. So we have classes that teach you practical skills like HR and training and development. We also have uh, CSI or culture and social influence as a concentration. It focuses on persuasion as well as um, interpersonal relationships. So required classes for that are um, our intercultural class as well as theory of rhetoric. Our final concentration and our newest concentration is health communication. And health communication is essentially how we advocate for ourselves and advocate for others in healthcare settings. And a lot of people are like, well, if I do organizational communication, couldn't I also just work in a health area? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, but a health organization is going to have more nuances than a regular organization. And so in that, we have a class on patient provider relationships, which teaches how to be an advocate for yourself, an advocate for yourself and others, and teaches how to, uh, from the provider side, mm -hmm. if you um, want to go that route, what are some skills that you need? So learning those little things can help people, um, especially people in nursing and HHP and things like that, um, as well as just when you go to the doctor, I don't know anyone who's not going to go mm -hmm. to the doctor. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then our final is not really a concentration, um, but it's our generalist program. So let's say you look at all these classes and you're like, I want to take that and that and that and that and that and that. And we're like, you can do that. You should mix, mix, mix and match. Mix and match right. what you would prefer to learn. So if you want to learn a little bit about health com, a little bit about org com, and a little bit about interpersonal rhetoric, you absolutely can do that in the generalist. Mm -hmm. Mary Beth Asbury, the chair and professor yes. in the uh, Department of Communication yes. Studies. Yes. I wanted to congratulate you. I know you came aboard as chair uh, at the uh, right as the pandemic yes. was kind of winding down but not quite all yeah. wound down yes. and you've done great work within the thank department you. congratulations thank you and this does wrap up this edition of out of the blue a reminder you can find news about the campus 24 hours a day by going to our website mtsunews.com you can also find additional content on our social media platforms x facebook instagram and linkedin broadcasting from the center for educational media i'm andrew Oppman. stay safe stay on course and remain true blue.